Now that we've gotten uh, most of the large dents softened in our bottom bow, we're going to turn our attention to the top branch. Um, this one uh, took a few uh, heavy knocks in the uh, accident as well. And as you can see, we have a lot of them. Uh, they've been circled and marked so that we can focus in on them and uh, without kind of chasing around, jumping here and there, we can see what's going on. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use a barrel-shaped uh, dent ball. As you can see, it's uh, exactly as it's described, it's barrel shaped. And we, we're going with one of the larger sizes for this just simply because the branch is large and uh, we don't want to stretch the metal any more than absolutely necessary. So now, if it, the thing is, is if, if you use a spherical shaped dip ball, um, there's too much of a, a small, well, there's too small a surface area. And that has a tendency to uh, stretch and cause a uh, a really bad distortion. It doesn't really help at all. By using a barrel shape we have a larger surface area and that actually gives us a bit more control. It's not quite so aggressive as a, as a round spherical ball will, will be. Uh, it reaches a certain point and it basically won't push up anymore. So what we'll do now is we'll just slide this in and uh, as you can see right here uh, just to give you an example, there's this large elongated dent that's in the back of uh, the top bow. And there's our barrel. So we're going to line it up over the top and very gently we'll slide it underneath and across. And as you can see the dent starts to come up fairly smooth and doesn't get stretched. But there again, we're going to want to smooth this out even more so, because we don't want that to show even a little bit. So we'll be going to the dent machine shortly, as soon as we have all of these addressed. There's the dent there. We'll come over here. And sometimes, you know, you can go back and forth like this, but there are times where you have creases like these crossways ones, where basically karate chopped it. So we'll slip that underneath there. We'll go forward and backwards, but then we'll also go side to side. And that'll push that crease out a little more evenly. Same with right here. And gently, now we can smooth that out. Raise those dents to a certain degree. But at the same time, we're going to run into a few spots in here that are a little more stubborn. So we're going to lay those crease areas over the ball and just gently tap them and get those hard spots under control. You can soften them up a lot easier that way. Okay. We're good. Time to do some guard moldings. What we have here is the uh, bow cap for that Hurst runner. Um, this is the bottom bow. And uh, I don't know if the camera can pick up a lot of these, but uh, there's quite a few smallish kind of dents and little dings. And you can imagine you f ignore those, and uh, well, it's going to kind of take away from the overall final product. So uh, we are going to remove all of those dents and do a really nice job on it at that. So uh, this is the tool for the job. Um, it's a uh, guard molding uh, rolling tool, or it's a dent tool. Uh, I also use it for making guard moldings. Um, I've made quite a few of them over the years. It's really handy. You still have to be a pretty good metal worker before you can put this thing to, uh, to use. But um, it's worth the, the, the investment, that's for sure. Anyway, <coughs> it has a spring-loaded pressure uh, assembly here. This is a lock. So uh, pretty much when you feed your sheet metal through, uh, the roller on top gives. But uh, you can use it also uh, to uh, kind of even out your surface and your thickness because 
once you've uh, positioned your roller on uh, the sheet metal thickness, you can lock it. And uh, once you've locked it, then what you're going to do is you're just feeding it through. See, there's, there's no click in there. So I can just feed it right through. Now, if I unlock it, I don't know if you've heard that, but... Okay, so if you feed this through, lock it, it's going to help you avoid uh, compressing the metal and thinning it and also causing uh, unneeded distortion in the guard molding. Uh, if you have one that's in pretty good shape like this and uh, its dimensions are still intact, you want to preserve that as best you can. So all we're doing right now is we're going to go through this and we're going to uh, pretty much just attack all of those individual little dents and dings and smooth them all out and then it'll get a little bit of uh, sanding belt time in the buffing room and then we'll be ready to mount it onto the bottom bow. Yeah, we've done a little bit of sanding on this already. So, it's coming along real nicely. We're just about done. Got to just kind of balance things out, smooth it. Takes a little practice to get the, uh, the hang of this thing. But uh, once you get it, you, if you've ever had to straighten one of these the old-fashioned way, which takes forever, uh, once you get one of these things and you start using it and get the hang of it, you start wondering how you ever managed to uh, do, do without. So now we've got all of our, our dents are pretty well addressed. We've done a little bit of sanding, and uh, we'll do a little bit more uh, belt sanding uh, once we have this mounted to the bottom bow. And uh, so, there we go. So now, we've got this all straightened out. You can kind of look at it and you go, oh, it doesn't look like it quite fits that bow cap. Actually, it does, uh, if it's pretty nice. Once you push everything down, there's no, you know, squeezing or hammering or compressing of anything. It just needs to be wired down uh, correctly. And it fits pretty much like a glove. So now we'll just wire this in. We might have to make some minor adjustments to it, uh, but uh, like I said, minor adjustments. And so that one's pretty well ready to go. And as far as like our top branch, which had a fair number of dings and dents in it, but nothing real severe, same with the guard molding. Now that we've got this all de-dinged, it'll lay right on without any real headaches. We should be able to solder this into place very, very easy. We should have all this stuff taken care of this evening. Now the last remaining branch that we had left was that inside number three branch that had some of the bad damage. As you can see, we've, we've addressed all the dings and dents that were in it. Uh, it was belt sanded, and now that there again, it's ready for uh, some polishing. So we have a little bit of cleanup uh, left to do, and then uh, we're off to soldering and then we can start working at a little bit more polishing, not too much, and we can uh, put the horn back together again, get it butt up and off to play.
Okay. We'll put the guard wire on next, but we're going to take care of that top branch and get that finished up. It's ready to go. We got that all wired in. Everything holds secure so nothing shifts around. But it's uh, not crushed or anything like that. You don't want to twist the wires down so far that you're actually causing dents on the branch. It's just slightly held in place. Notice we don't have a ton of wires. We only just have a few in this case. So, all right. Now you get the idea. And we're back. Well, here we are. We managed to get the uh, the body section all put together. Uh, braces are all soldered up. The branches have been de-dented. All of our trim work is in place. Little little cleanup needed. It still has buffing dirt on it. Uh, nothing's been degreased or anything like that. So we're now at the stage where uh, we'll do a little bit more cleanup on the body. Um, it'll need a little bit more buffing. There are some solder stains that we're going to have to uh, square away. But uh, very shortly uh, we'll be getting the bell remounted and uh, get that all cleaned up. We've uh, positioned our bell brace. Uh, so that's all exactly where it's uh, supposed to be. We've, uh, of course, we did a, a test run with the bell to make sure that our bracing is where we want it. Everything lines up just right. And that way, uh, without the bell in place, we have access to do a little, little more cleanup. Uh, it makes it a lot easier as opposed to trying to strap it out with wicking and buffing compound and such. That's kind of the hard way to go about it. This makes it a lot simpler um, and it speeds up the process. So now we will uh, be getting on with uh, mounting the bell and uh, see if we can get this buttoned up real soon.